We're not just changing the way people look at church, but the way people look at faith and humanity. This is the FSC Global. All right, so first off, first start. Check this out. Uh, I want to let you guys know uh, we are having prayer every Monday at 5 a.m. The Zoom link will be in the description below. I just want to let you know we're having prayer on Mondays at 5 a.m. We used to have it at uh, 7 p.m. Um, but I want us to actually like get this prayer in like at the top of the morning. I know it's going to be tough for some people, okay? But 7 o'clock was tough for some people, so you know what? It don't even matter. Every Monday morning at 5 a.m. we're going to be praying um, over the word that was that was preached um, on Sunday over the visions and the callings on our lives individually as well as collectively. And um, I need you guys there. Like I want you to be a part of what we do and who we are. There was something incredibly important that um, one of my favorite people said, her name is uh, Carol Shirai. She said, you can always tell uh, the strength of someone's ministry by the people who show up for prayer. So I want us to be able to show up to pray over each other, to pray over our homes, to pray over our ministry, to pray over the things that we do and who we are. Every Monday morning, 5 a m can't wait to see you there we need you Woo! what's up what's up what's up y'all welcome again of course welcome to the fsc global your digital pit stop changing the way that we see faith in humanity listen up this is week I don't, I'm not even going to count these weeks because I don't even know what number we're on. But we are in our series called Bold AF. Bold AF. Listen, I love the series. I do. I really do love this series. There are a lot of series that we've done that I like, but I, it, this is one of my favorites because it shows, uh, it shows the strength of God inside of us when we are bold and ambitious with the type of faith that we use and utilize to chase after the things that God has called us to, to chase after the people for us to become the people that God has called us to become. So, huh. I want to get into the word real quick first. Okay, go to uh, Exodus, not three. Why am I on Exodus three? Go to Exodus twelve, right quick, yo. Yeah, no, don't don't go to Exodus twelve. Don't not yet. Go to <laughs> Exodus eighteen. Exodus, yep, that's right. Exodus eighteen. Of course, I'll be reading from the uh, ESV version of the Bible, but I want you to go to verse number seventeen. Ver, yeah, Exodus eighteen. Verse 17. <clears throat> and it says, Moses' father in law said to him, What you are doing is not good. You and the people with you will certainly wear yourselves out, for the thing is too heavy for you. You are not able to do it alone. Now, obey my voice. I will give you advice, and God will be with you. You shall represent the people before God and bring their cases to God. And you shall warn them about the statutes and the laws and make them know the way in which they must walk and what they must do. Moreover, look for able men from all the people, men who fear God, who are trustworthy and who hate a bribe. And place such men over the people as chiefs of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties and of tens. And let them judge the people at all times. Every great matter they shall bring to you, but any small matter they shall decide themselves. So it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. If you do this, God will direct you. 
you will be able to endure and all this all this people also will go to their place in peace Whew. listen this one about to beat me up this <laughs> the subject we about to speak on today give up on yourself father god in the name of jesus uh this one has already beaten me up. <laughs> so I want to thank you uh, for this word that you're going to give today, for this interview that you're giving today. And I want to thank you for the way that you're doing it. Um, thank you for your creativity. Thank you for your correction. Thank you for your willingness to be with us. Thank you for your patience with us. Be with us in this word. Be with us in this interview and get us right. In Jesus name we pray. Amen bro. <laughs> Give up on yourself. Now, culturally, usually, uh, when we speak about giving up, it's in the context of saying, yo, I'm not giving up on this. I'm going to keep doing this forever and ever and ever and ever. Uh, but there's a flip side to that. Uh, sometimes we put so much on ourselves that there's no room for anyone else to come alongside and nothing that's worth doing especially for God, can ever be done alone. Now, I know a lot of people would disagree. You can have your disagreement. Disagree with your mama. I don't care. But for God, the thing that he has Moses doing, he definitely cannot have Moses do it alone. Now, listen, we love our leaders. We absolutely love our leaders. But one thing we have to understand is that our leaders cannot get things done by themselves. Our leaders need people to lead alongside them. And also, our leaders need leaders. Our leaders need coaches. Okay. So it's pretty much just a conversation. Uh, we're interviewing different people uh, for our series called Bold AF. Bold AF, we're um, interviewing people who we have seen exemplify having bold and ambitious faith in whatever direction that they're going in life. Because okay. it's one thing to uh, talk about it. Uh, to jump around about it in church it's a completely mm -hmm. different thing to actually go out there and do it Absolutely. and I, I think i believe that the more people we see doing those things the more we're apt to do them as well Absolutely. so that's all this is all right see all right mm -hmm. Girl better breathe. This girl, I said, <laughs> this, girl, this girl better, she better breathe. I know. Woosa. Woosa. You ready? I'm ready. Here we go. What's up, what's up, what's up, y'all? Welcome, welcome, of course, welcome again to the FSC Global, your digital pit stop, changing the way that we see faith and humanity. Listen, this is another week, bro. We are rolling through these weeks of bold. This is, this summer is probably about to be like the shortest summer ever. I swear it was just like May 16th yesterday. But anyway, another week of bold AF. We are interviewing people uh, who we believe are exemplifying having bold and ambitious faith. And we got another one for y'all today. Okay. So what I want y'all to do is I want you to give a warm welcome to the life coach extraordinaire, Yolanda Smith. <laughs> ah! So how you doing? What's up? I'm good. How are you? I am wonderful. I am doing great. Uh, for for everybody who does not know who you are, uh, tell the people who you are and what you do. Yes, my name is Yolanda Smith, wife of Stacy Smith. I am a mom, of course, a wife. I am the life coach navigator. Thank you, James, for the other name. Hey. <laughs> I am the life coach navigator. I am a life coach and a financial coach. Oh, I forgot about the financial coach part. <laughs> right. Yes. Okay, so while we've been interviewing all these people, um, we've been asking just about everyone we interview, um, we're... We're taught what faith is in church or wherever we uh, where we come from. But in your own words, what would you define faith to be? In my own words, mm -hmm. oh wow! Um, in my own words, I would say faith is doing something that you're very scared to do and not <laughs> sure if it's gonna work out. But you um, build up enough faith. Um, well, I shouldn't use faith, enough belief to say mm -hmm. I could do this and, and going out and doing those things and trusting God through um, those situations, whatever you step out to do. Okay. Personal question for you. Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy faith? No. Okay. 
I just want to. I just want to know no. if anybody felt the way I felt. No. I just, just want to know if anybody felt me. Okay. I need to be seen right now because okay, not alone. faith is not faith is not cute. It's okay. Not at yeah. all. <laughs> and and I, I say that because um, we do. Um, Especially in the faith community, we romanticize what faith is. You know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We can mm-hmm. quote that scripture in Hebrews all day. That's Hebrews, right? right? That's he, that he, okay, I just want to make sure I'm spitting the right stuff to you. <laughs> but, <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm spitting the right stuff to you. But we, we, we can quote those things all day and we romanticize those things the same way we did those uh, those teenage romantic comedies in the, right. in, the, in the late 90s, the same way we uh, romanticized superheroes and the MCU and stuff like that we have romanticized faith to be this this thing to where all you need is this faith and then you can go out there and do anything that you want to do <laughs> not ever telling people all the things that comes with having faith so my question for you is during your walk and your profession in your life period uh, what are some instances in where you had to exercise faith when you just didn't feel like it oh wow uh, like where can I start? <laughs> um, just I can talk about the story of before I even began. Um, I was working at the post office, and I know it, I was frustrated there, but I couldn't leave because in my mind, if I leave, I ain't gonna have no income mm-hmm. coming in. <laughs> like I got you know some kids, I got a husband, you know mm-hmm. I have to help take care of the home, and I had to when. The situation came where my son, he was diagnosed with autism mm-hmm. and I was really pushed out there. <laughs> so um, just going through a lot with him, had to go through a lot of um, therapies and I couldn't work. Mm-hmm. So I knew eventually they was going to say, hey, you barely at work. We don't, we don't need you. <laughs> we don't need you no more. <laughs> we don't need okay, you anymore. You can right? go. <laughs> but I ended up taking a year off mm-hmm. and during that year, I said, if I can make it now, I can make it. <laughs> mm, yeah. And I was still hard headed. <laughs> that is like that is like a common theme in the Smith household. God dog. <laughs> <laughs> It's a Smith tradition, I guess. In the, in, I don't know. In, the, in the bogus household too, whatever. I got you. But I went back I went back to work mm-hmm. and then COVID hit. Yeah. The kids was out of school. Every day. And I said, okay, God, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I'm just like, okay, this, let me just tell my customers I, you know, Man. I enjoy them. But, mm. um, yeah, I hear God now. <laughs> wow. So when, when the pandemic hit, you were still at the post office? Yes. Okay. So when it did hit, like, what was the thing that made you go, I need to pivot away from doing this and into doing something else? Well, I was still kind of playing around with it. Mm-hmm. Then I was like, no, nah, it's not going to work. I'm going to stay at the post office. No, nah, it's not going to work. Kind of playing around with it. And then when I finally put in my notice at the post office, things just took off for me. Mm. I was really scared. I was, you know, just meeting a lot of people that I didn't know. Mm-hmm. A lot of strangers that kind of helped me get out there and things like that. I was really scared of that as well. Trying, You know, when you meet new people, you don't so I don't know this name. <laughs> right. Yeah, I got you. I feel you. <laughs> right. So it's like, uh, I don't know. And I, you know, I don't want to say, well, you know, maybe God put him in my life. Nah, I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I don't, <laughs> I don't know don't you. I don't know you, right? So just, um, you know, and then it's just, things just start opening up for me. Mm. And it, be- it didn't become smooth, but it gave me the courage to say, okay, I got to step out there. Yeah. That's I think mm-hmm. I think that's dope, especially with uh, the discomfort of it all. Mm-hmm. That's how I like for me, just for me, because I'm I'm that I'm that brand of hard headed too. <laughs> um, it's encouraging to realize it's not just me doing this. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of times, a lot of our anxiety can come from I got to get this done, I got to mm-hmm. get that done, this got to get done this way, this got to get done that way, and <clears throat> to actually be in the place to where, man, like I, I think like. God is doing this with me or he's pushing me to do it. So if he pushed me to do it, he's going to have to protect me somehow. Right. So I feel exactly. like it, it's, in, it's encouraging as much as it is uncomfortable mm-hmm. and especially to do a complete like career change because going from post office to life coaching, those skills don't really match up with one another. <laughs> 
<laughs> Yo, this man Moses is special. That's, that's that's probably like the only word I could use to describe Moses. Moses was a special, special guy. Um, everybody, I think everybody knows the way like he was born. He was born. There was a decree to kill every uh, boy under two. He was born. He was hidden for months. Then he had to be given away. He was down the river, and then somebody got him, and then he grew up. Listen. Moses had a huge, huge history. But as an adult, Moses was a worker. Like Moses tended to his, his father-in-law's cattle, his sheep. Moses was a wor working, 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 <laughs> working man. And I say that because Moses would have rather worked than lead. And for a lot of us, we would much rather work than lead. There's so much responsibility with with leading that it's just more work than just working that a lot of us don't want that responsibility to begin with. Present company not excluded. And so with with Moses, by the time he gets to the point where he's going to the Pharaoh, tell him to let his people go. All Moses is doing at this point is being obedient to God. Right. And he's being obedient to God. He's doing all the things that God told him to do when he was talking to him at the burning bush. And he's just practicing obedience. So now at this point, they're in the wilderness. Like he's, he's leading them and doesn't even really recognize that he's leading these people. And so it gets to a point where he's doing everything for everyone. They're in the wilderness, they're doing their march, and they got their battles, they got uh, away from Pharaoh, and they got away from Egypt. And anytime someone has a problem, they're coming to Moses. Anytime somebody needs to get married, they're coming to Moses. Anytime somebody needs some food, uh, they need somewhere to work, they need somewhere to play, they come to Moses. Now, from Moses' perspective, hey, this is what I'm supposed to do. Because Moses had never seen a leader to lead this many people adequately. Never seen it. He's just seen Pharaoh. And Pharaoh used his power to strong arm everybody. So Moses has had no actual example of how to lead a multitude of people. Ooh, this is going to get crazy, yo. This is going to be so crazy. So Moses' father-in-law father comes, and his father-in-law, he brings his wife, he brings Moses' children, he brings his family. And Moses like, oh, man, thank you so much. I missed y'all so badly. I'm out here. I'm just out here being every man to every man. I'm being everything to everybody. And Moses' father-in-law says, yo, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. What you doing is wrong. I know it feels good to help all these people. And when every time somebody has a problem, they come to you. But that's not you being obedient to God. You have to learn how to transition from being a worker to being a leader. <laughs> they don't really match up. So, so what got you into life coaching? So what got me into life coaching, it was something that naturally came to me mm -hmm. um but the funny thing about it i just i want to help people with the mindset and things like that mm -hmm. but then everybody that came to me had a special needs child mm -hmm. and i said okay what what are you saying mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you saying so i started helping families that had special needs kids put a plan together mm -hmm. and doing you know different things with my life coaching mm -hmm. and then i said okay i think this is it <laughs> wow mm -hmm. so your I think, you know, I think God knows what he's doing sometimes. Uh -huh. But um, <laughs> because it, it sounds like like your your current path came out of a need that you saw that you could naturally fill. Mm -hmm. I know like sometimes like we'll see gaps in certain places and because like we want to help so much, mm -hmm. we'll go and fill that gap, even though that has absolutely nothing to do with who we are or what we do. Right. We don't have no <laughs> skills in it. We just like, I just want to be a servant. Nah, bro, you don't belong here. <laughs> so, but, but I think it's, it's, it's fascinating to see like when we see a gap in certain places that we naturally fit in mm -hmm. and how easy it is for us to be like, Nah, that ain't my business. Right. <laughs> like, right. It's easy to be like, nah, I think I think somebody else can do that. Right. <laughs> but so for you, like what what's the transition for you going okay, post office, um, life coaching, and then into financial coaching? Because life coaching is one thing. 
Mm-hmm. Financial coaching is a whole nother life. Yes. <laughs> like, yes so is. what's the connection with those two things? Well, with those two, how I got connected with that, the, you know, helping the parents, especially need kids. And a lot of them was in situations like I was like, mm-hmm. hey, if I go to work and they call from school and mm-hmm. I can't, you know, afford this and I can't do this, they the finance was all over the place. Yeah. And so I started helping people put savings plans together and stuff. I was like, I need help in that myself. <laughs> so <laughs> I started taking courses mm-hmm. and, and I ran into a company that, you know, helped me a lot to mm-hmm. kind of teach it to me. Gotcha. And actually the company took me in and said, hey, we're going to teach you all of this so you can use it in your financial coaching. Nice. And so I ended up joining the company as well oh, to get wow. an extra income with that as well. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I mentor individuals inside the company as well mm-hmm. okay so broad broad uh broad stroking it um <laughs> you're a coach yes flat out yes <laughs> you enjoy being a coach i love it yeah what, what what about being a coach that's satisfying for you it's just seeing people getting the things that they need hearing the things that they need and it's it just i just love seeing people understanding and getting what they need out of a coach It's many times when I needed a coach, you know, when I was going through things and didn't know how, who to reach out to, no one was there to help. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I do have patience, you know, that's, and I know that's a big thing. I have patience with people Mm -hmm. and a lot of people say that could be an issue, (laughs) (laughs) but I have patience with people and I love to see people win. I love to see them reach their goal. I, th- I think that's that's fascinating because there are certain characters I think about in the Bible who were natural coaches who didn't want to do it, mm-hmm. and it, 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 it's crazy. I think of like somebody like a like a Moses, right? Mm-hmm. And he has no desire to be going out here telling Pharaoh to let his people go and leading these people into the wilderness <laughs> to the promised land that he didn't get to see but like doing all of this stuff and he has absolutely no desire for it but he has all the skills for it and he has the calling for it mm. so like what, what would you say to somebody who this is not something that they're naturally comfortable with doing but they have the necessary skills and the calling for it how do they make those things connect especially when they don't have the desire for it Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely hard. I know with me, I can talk about me because I was, I'm kind of shy. Mm-hmm. I have my shy ways where it's like, I don't know, some people may call it intimidation. Like when you, because being around, like the people I'm around are titled people, like higher people, mm-hmm. millionaires and people like that. And little old me, I'm <laughs> like, why am I in the company of these people? <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> what am I doing here? So I just, you know, the things that I do is I really just talk to myself. Mm-hmm. Like, look, <laughs> look, girl, <laughs> God has put you in the place mm-hmm. for a reason. <laughs> yeah. You could go in there, go in there scared, but you're going to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I, I just uh, recognize in, in my humble life that God don't really care if you're scared. <laughs> God don't care if you're oh, you scared. Huh? <laughs> so go. I don't care. <laughs> right. <Man. laughs> I give you a push. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's crazy because it's, it's one of those things where when, like, I know, like I said before, like some people who don't have the desire for it, but they have the, the skill for it. They have the necessary calling for it. And then you have people on the other side of the spectrum who desires what this person has but don't have the skill or wow. the calling for it. Right. Like we encounter those people too, sometimes more than the other uh-huh. who mm-hmm. want certain things that are just not for them. Like as a coach, life and financial, mm-hmm. how do you navigate these people through that part? They desire something that doesn't belong to them. How do you navigate someone through that? Hey, I, I always tell them, hey, look, if you could teach someone that desires it, have a skill of teaching them the skills that you have mm. and make that a goal of yours because if you don't have a desire for it, you're not, <laughs> something not going to add up right. Right, so like, <laughs> they have they have the desire. They don't have the skill. They don't have the calling. This thing that they desire, it doesn't belong to them. Oh, wow. How do you navigate somebody through that? 
That's that's gonna be a lot of navigating. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to sit down and, and figure out. What we need a plan is. for this. Yes, we need to sit down and plan. We gotta start from point A. Okay. Yeah, you got a lot of good skills over here, but let's <laughs> try, try, to, <laughs> try to reroute them to the skills yeah. again. Yeah, let's <laughs> take a detour. <laughs> <laughs> let's take a, and I actually talk to my clients like that. Like we're gonna make a right, we're gonna make a left, we're gonna True. detour. And you get to someone like, okay, let's detour. Those are some good skills. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm laughing. I'm laughing because that reminds me of Elder Tommy. He used to tell us all the time. He said, "Hey, if they, if they ain't good at it, okay, you can promote them out." <laughs> that is crazy. It, I, I asked that. I asked that question because um, I know you do as well. But I know I encounter a lot of people um, whose desires conflict with their calling mm -hmm. what more so like with their identity mm -hmm. and so the more people i see in that is uh, those are really tough conversations to have mm -hmm. like you yo mm -hmm. i know you feel like you're called to the nations <laughs> but you don't even clean your kitchen <laughs> so i like it's, it's just it's just it's one of them things mm -hmm. where like having those like really tough conversations to help navigate people through mm -hmm. certain things because our desires can mess us up especially yeah. when our desires aren't connected to what god has for us yeah. that leaves people heartbroken that mm -hmm. leaves people lost that leaves mm -hmm. people in all different kinds of situations mm -hmm. so I, i'm always curious to other leaders yes you leader <laughs> <laughs> she, she stopped breathing for a second <laughs> She's not breathing for a second. Yes, leader, you. Um, like how to navigate people through that because that's still a, a part. Um, I'm still learning how to be softer in that. Because, I mean, I'd be like, nah, bro, you ain't got it. But in a lot of times, like, that's not helpful. <laughs> like, like, that's not, well, tell me what I am good at. And sometimes you could just talk to people and help them say what they really then they think about i just said that maybe i should be doing this because mm -hmm. sometimes you have a conversation with them and make them recognize what mm -hmm. they don't have a desire in right that maybe they should be going this route because just having that conversation with them and making them kind of tell on themselves without you saying look buddy <laughs> tell on themselves <laughs> wow now all the things that moses father-in-law his name is jethro by the way all the things that Moses' father-in-law is telling him, I'm, I'm just guessing that Moses could have known that he could or should have been doing those things. But there's a huge mindset shift that comes with transitioning from being a worker to a leader in the desire department. So it's easy to, uh, to physically do the things that a leader does, but to be able to change the mindset it's completely different because now my desires has to match God's desires for me as a leader. That I could do all the mechanical things, all the technical things that a leader does. I can delegate. Hey, you go do that. I could, I could delegate. Hey, would you do that for me? Could you please do that? But the mindset shift is completely different. Because not only do I need to have the actions of a leader, of a coach, I have to have the heart of one. And everyone does not have the heart of a leader. We have a lot of leaders in the world who really ain't got the heart, on it, heart for it. Some of them don't got stomach for it. And that's where God comes into play. God is saying to Moses, God is saying to us, God is saying to James, your desires have to match my desires for you. Because even though your personality doesn't necessarily match the office that I put you in, culturally, it's still the office that I put you in. But God, I ain't, I ain't good enough. I ain't, I ain't got the proper training. Everybody ain't going to follow this. God like, what that got to do with me? What does, that, what does that have to do with you being obedient to me and doing the things that I called you to do? 
<laughs> Yo, check this out. So Jethro gives um he gives Moses instructions about how to delegate certain people to have certain responsibilities so that he don't have to have everything on his shoulders. Now, one of the reasons why Moses has a lot of these things on his shoulder, well, one is because he thought that's what he was supposed to be doing. Two, he didn't have any examples of, to, of how to do anything else differently. So that's what he did. And then three, Moses didn't particularly like talking to people. It made him uncomfortable. He was afraid that he might stutter. He was afraid that the people who was listening to him might think that he wasn't as smart as, as they thought he was. You see, there's a lot of fear and insecurity behind why we like to say we don't do people. I'm antisocial. I'm an introvert. But check this out. When our desires begin to match God's desires for us, our personality and who we are personally no longer matters. So tell me about if someone wants to switch careers, right? Mm -hmm. What would be, say like three steps that are absolutely necessary to change careers the way that you did? <laughs> three steps. First, make sure that's what you really want to do. <laughs> I actually make people Be sit sure. down and just <clears throat> think about it. Because sometimes people, something can happen in one career and they get upset about it and then they're ready to change. Mm. So I want to make sure people know what they really want because sometimes they make irrational decisions because of, of a situation. Right. Secondly, okay, so if you do make this career change, how what else in your life that is going to change as well? Mm -hmm. um, let's say if you, let's go to the post office. If mm -hmm. the post office you knew exactly how much you're gonna get paid. You knew your your you know your schedule, everything. This new career gonna have something totally different to it. Maybe a new pay, maybe higher or lower, mm -hmm. and it's gonna have a different routine to it. Yeah. So just making people aware of when they change these, you know, in these careers that they know that other things gonna change as well, not mm -hmm. just that career. That big, cause um, I remember. <laughs> so I used to work at uh, this place called Target, <laughs> right? I was about maybe 20 and it was, I worked the, the early morning shift, so I got there at like 3.30, oh, wow. got early, off at like 12, morning. yeah. Okay. So I was, I, was, I was awake anyway, so it didn't matter. <laughs> um, <laughs> I remember one morning, um, it's about six o'clock in the morning. I called my mother on the phone. I said, Ma, I don't think I want to work here no more. <laughs> she said, okay, she has sleep. <laughs> so, like, she said, uh, so like, what you going to do? I said, well, like, me and Mike just started this studio business, so I think we're going we gonna to do that. She said, you got a plan? I said, yeah. I like that. <laughs> I had, had nothing. We, we, we were just making money and that was that was the plan. We was making money. Right. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, okay, well, okay, well, just make sure you're making money. I said, cool, bet. <laughs> I um I got on the phone with my mother and I had like one of them little scanners at the store that they uh -huh. had. I put it, I put it, I was on a ladder at the time. Oh, so Jesus. I put it, I put it on the shelf on the top, on the top of the ladder. <laughs> And I got off the ladder and I walked out of Target. Oh, wow. No two weeks notice, no days notice. I just left. And <laughs> I specifically remember while I was leaving, I was like, man, I ain't never coming back here again. <laughs> and I'm on the way home and I'm like, oh, man, I got to go pick up my check on Friday, though. <laughs> but <laughs> I specifically remember that because... In my mind at the time, I was 20 years old, and all I could think of was like, man, I would, I just want to work for myself, and I got something good going over here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just quit this job. I'm just going to just do this, <laughs> and I had, I did not think about how me quitting, especially me quitting the way that I quit, right. would affect everything else mm -hmm. in my life. So just imagine, like a few months down the line. 
uh, something goes wrong and maybe I need my job at Target back. Yeah. <laughs> you think they're going to give me that job back? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. so, but I think that people who think like me, you probably should always have a plan before you do something. <laughs> Don't be like me at all. I had zero plan. I just knew I was passionate about the thing that I yeah. was doing and I was going to have to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, it blew up in my face a little bit. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, it did. It <laughs> but did. You had some good. You knew what you wanted to do. You knew your career path. Right. And, and you wanted it right then and there. You you didn't want to wait. I was twenty. <laughs> everything happens right then and there. You <laughs> said everything happens right then and there. I, I think that, that's that's wild because even though like that was that was a choice I made, wrong choice, right choice. I don't even know if it was wrong or right. Still to this day, mm -hmm. I just know it landed me to where I am currently. Mm -hmm. Um. It was one of those things where a uh, safety net was completely taken off and my poor decisions put me in a position where I would have to execute everything that I needed to in order to survive. Okay. And <clears throat> I agree that that's not necessarily for everyone, mm -hmm. but I am a believer that any place you find yourself in, God will find you there too. Yeah. I believe failure is a part of the process as well. Yeah. Uh, and not that you failed, but you kind of left them kind of. Oh. oh, bro. Just left the ladder up and everything. Oh, bro. That, 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 that year was a failure. <laughs> that, that, year was a, that year was a bit of a failure, bro. That was, that was rough. That was really rough. And granted, like, I probably learned the most in that year mm -hmm. um, with failing. Because failing don't feel good. And when mm -hmm. you fail, you recognize every little thing that you did wrong. Yeah. And you just start nitpicking at everything. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest thing I had to learn was like, yeah, you messed up here. You messed up here. That doesn't make the whole thing wrong. It's right. so like just because you uh, you did things in an incorrect manner or in a manner that's unconventional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no two weeks notice. No, no right. days. No, you just, bro, you just walked out. Wow. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I did that. <laughs> but it, it taught me so much about the details. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times when we face failure, we forget about the details. Mm -hmm. We think the entire thing is wrong. Mm -hmm. The entire thing is trash. The entire thing is a failure. When no, like it's just this small minor detail mm -hmm. that you messed up. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Right. Yeah, I, I could have been an entrepreneur and then if things went wrong, I could have went back to Target if I would have given that two weeks notice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I still wasn't going to give it two weeks notice. <laughs> but it was, you can not even wait the 12. I, I, yo, it's so crazy. <laughs> Six o'clock in the morning, just walked out. I don't know what was wrong with me or right with me. I don't know. <laughs> but like that's, that's the way it happened. I think mm -hmm. God is so strategic. Because the way that he that I behaved ended up matching the person that I became. Mm. Um, I had no intention on being an unconventional person. Right. That was never my intention. Right. I was like, I don't want to do this. I'm not doing it. <laughs> and like that was like being unconventional, being different. That was never my intention. And, like for all intents and purposes, my intention was to be like everybody else. Like, mm -hmm. I wanted to hide in the crowd. It's like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be in the same crowd as everybody else. That's that way me. I can go out here and make my money and go home. Don't nobody know my name. Bow. Uh -huh. And God, I'm like, no, nah, brother, bro. Right. Oh, and, that is so me. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think it's, it's fascinating when our calling doesn't necessarily match our current personality. Oh, no, it don't. Right. No, it don't. <laughs> I, think, I think that's the biggest thing that um, I've seen from a lot of creative people a lot of mm -hmm. entrepreneurs a lot of um, artists a lot of creative believers is their gift doesn't match who they are currently so they think that the gift that they don't match the gift at all right right mm -hmm. if they feel like they're not worthy of the gift that mm -hmm. they, that the gift doesn't belong to them or <clears throat> they just shouldn't have it right. and I see that so much this uh, this feeling of being unworthy uh, what, what do they call it? Uh, imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of people walk through life with that. It could be some of the most creative and talented, gifted mm -hmm. people on the planet, but they don't see it because their current personality doesn't match how great they are. <laughs> right. And the more, the more I see that, um, the more I believe like 
the the life coach and the therapist and the coaches period and the leaders are so necessary because people need to be navigated through that mm -hmm. there are so many gifted people who won't even accept the gift because it doesn't match who they are personally they feel like them, they feel themselves to be so dirty or they mm -hmm. feel themselves to be so flawed that they don't deserve the gift that they have right. and that's untrue yeah and, and that's funny how you say that because i could coach that to someone else and say that to someone mm -hmm. else then i go home like i be talking to my no. <laughs> yo the the relationship between moses and um and jethro his father-in-law is is really really special even though we only get like glimpses of it like we, we we see the the relationship between moses and aaron between moses and miriam even a little bit between moses and his wife uh even moses and joshua but we rarely definitely with moses and god but we rarely see the relationship between moses and jethro besides this this passage but you could tell how special this is and it reminds me of like a mentorship like a coach because it made me recognize that even the leaders need leaders even the coaches need coaches even the therapists need therapists like even the top guys need top guys because this particular type of relationship ended up being one of the most fruitful part parts of Moses's journey and one of the things that really hit hard for me with with when Jethro, Jethro said to Moses was uh it said oh here it is if you do this he's saying if you do this, this strategy that I'm telling you, if you do this, God will direct you, you will be able to endure, and all of these people will go to their place in peace. What if the thing that's stopping you from hearing God's direction is the fact that you won't listen to his strategy? What if the thing that's keeping a lot of the people around you from having peace is because you refuse to invoke God's strategy for you. Wow. That's it for me. All right, I'm coaching myself but talking to another human. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is so funny that you said that. Yeah, and I, yeah. I think that's completely <laughs> reflective even mm -hmm. in like leaders in the Bible. Like Moses was like that. He could tell these people to have faith, to follow God's plan. And like this dude was like the only one who could speak to God face to face. And he like, man, God, I don't think they're gonna listen to me. Bro, you like the you that you the you the you the mouthpiece. Right. So I, I I could definitely see that and I think also like leaders need leaders. Absolutely. I think it's 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 one thing to be able to coach people through whatever thing that they're going through, mm -hmm. but who's coaching the coaches? Like right. who's leading the leaders? Right. And I think um Something that has been really big on my like my life personally is being able to lead leaders mm. because I don't personally have the patience to lead multitudes of people. <laughs> okay. That's not my gift. Gotcha. Uh, my gift has always been into leading people who lead people. And that being the thing that catapults that into like the micro into the macro. Gotcha. Because I can speak to a, I can speak the language of a leader. Um, it's much more difficult for me to speak the language of a follower. Not saying that a follower is bad. <clears throat> I just can't. I don't think in that manner all the time. Gotcha. And so that's something I'm, that that's even something that I'm working on. Because to be able to teach like you have to put yourself in the shoes of those people mm -hmm. and there are certain personality types who i just don't gel with right and um noticing that and eh, maybe you can't you can't you know affect everybody i'm realizing i'm most affecting the creative leaders so i think mm -hmm. that's that's something huge for me now in in your profession as far as leading people with their financial goals, leading people in, in life coaching, do you have a preference on the type of person you lead? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 
Um, you have to know, like, you got to have some idea. I know you don't know. Some people come to me and they don't know what they, they just stuck. They don't know even where to begin. And mm -hmm. that's okay. But some people will come and they're, they want it, but then they're like, well, uh, I don't know. Yeah. It's like, well, what, what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? I don't like to take people money that really gonna be just wasting money, giving mm -hmm. me money. I mean, I ain't wasted, but <laughs> you know, in the, on their end, Listen, you know. <laughs> but, stop making me feel bad about taking your money, cause right. Yeah, I get it. Right. So and then it's like, okay, I got all the steps. I know what I need to do, and mm -hmm. then. They, they go home and don't take the action. Like, mm -hmm. I can coach you, but I can't do the action for you. Mm. Those are the hardest ones that won't even take a first step and won't, you know, they'll write everything down. They'll put all the plans together, but they mm. won't take action with it. That just, it keep, that keeps bringing me back to Moses. <laughs> it does, because, man, the type of patience that he had to have, because... The, the children of Israel, they they got out of the wilderness. Well, they got into the wilderness, and then they wanted to go right back to Egypt because things weren't going the way they expected it mm -hmm. to. And those are the types of people that were called to lead. Mm -hmm. That aggravates me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but even like even the most humbling part of being aggravated about that is that it upsets me the most because the things I see in them. I also see in mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. There are definitely like there are mm -hmm. certain points where, man, I could talk to him blue in the face, but <laughs> why have I not put action to this this particular step that I want to mm -hmm. do? And then I think about, dang, I just told them people, shut up and just do it. <laughs> why don't I just do that? <laughs> <laughs> This is why a life coach need a life coach. A leader need a leader. Yes. Need a pastor need a pastor. Everybody yes. needs somebody. I, 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 that's, I think it's so necessary, which is why I think like your profession, and I, I interviewed Robin before, like mm -hmm. y'all's profession, and even last year I interviewed my wife, and she's a therapist. Y'all's professions are so necessary because everybody needs to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. Needs to be held accountable. Yeah. I, like There are certain things in my life where... <clears throat> If I'm not held accountable for doing it, I ain't gonna do it. Not gonna happen. <laughs> if I, I can even want it. I can even want it to happen. It is still not gonna happen. I know, and it's like if someone has to say, like the other day you and I was talking, right? Mm -hmm. And it's something I wanted to do, but then I got kind of like a little scared and shy. Mm -hmm. And then you said something like, I didn't call him here. <laughs> It gave me that confirmation, go ahead and do it, you know, mm -hmm. go ahead and take your action. And I always laugh because the ones, the individuals that I coach, mm -hmm. they see it in me too. They like, well, you always pushing us and <laughs> want to see us win, but what about you? Don't forget about you. Yeah, who oh, helping you win? Don't forget about yeah. me. <laughs> I'm saying like, they need to stay out of my business. <laughs> mm, right? <laughs> yeah, so I definitely... Can agree with that. <laughs> Man, I, I think I, in the, um, the professions and all of these different types of professions of leaders, um, it's become so expansive that it's, I'll say it this way, like the most effective people in those, um, in those parts of work are the most transparent. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, all the stuff I'm about to teach you, I've had to learn too. Yeah. In fact, I'm still learning it. Yes. Like, I'm still learning. Yes. Like, hey. Go write that down. If you thought about it, go do it now. Start it so you mm -hmm. don't forget it. Like all of those, all of the things that we would teach other people, I still have to live by. I still have to be accountable for that. Mm -hmm. And just like for for me personally, there are um, a handful of people who I would say like are charged with keeping me accountable. Probably mm -hmm. three or four. Okay. And like these are people who um, don't care about my feelings. <laughs> They um mm -hmm. <clears throat> they don't they don't care if I'm sick. Don't don't care if I don't feel like it. Right. Um, they say, Hey, did you do this today? Mm -hmm. I could try to lie, but you know, they're gonna they're gonna call me on it. Mm -hmm. And but those are the people I trust the most too. Yeah. And it's like when that happens, it's like, okay, now I, I have it's like almost like a streamline 
of making things happen. Because if I'm holding somebody else accountable, somebody has to hold me accountable. Then somebody has to hold that person accountable. Mm -hmm. And it's not making like everything so realistic. It's just to keep us going in the direction that we said we wanted to go in. Mm -hmm. So like, could you think of like, do you have like a handful of people like as a coach to where you're like, when I need coaching, these are the people I can go to. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And they are very hard on me. <laughs> <laughs> they are very hard. They don't care if I'm crying. Aww. They don't care. It's like, man, my tears, you know, I'm so used to crying from my dad. My dad rescued me. These people are like, girl. That ain't your daddy. <laughs> I'm not your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be all right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But that's that's so true. That is very, and I think I'm the most grateful for those types of people. Mm -hmm. um, because those are the people who allow me to be who I am to other people. Absolutely. So I, th I think that's 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 amazing. I got, I got a question for you. Okay. So, besides just doing it, mm -hmm. how can someone get into the, the mental space of chasing after their dreams? Oh, wow. That's a good one. <laughs> the mental space is very hard. <laughs> you actually, you like I said, you have to talk to yourself mm -hmm. a lot. You're not crazy. <laughs> you have to talk to yourself. I literally have to look in the mirror and, and just yell on the look. <laughs> you got to get it together. Stacey be looking at me like, you all right? Yeah. Yeah. Just have a conference meeting right now. <laughs> you have to really keep saying it until you take action. Mm -hmm. Until you get tired of looking at yourself in the mirror, singing the same old song, mm. and actually getting in your mind, okay, if I don't do this, I'm going to be standing in this mirror forever. So, I'm old. <laughs> so oh, I got to do this. So you have to really get in that mental space. By do I, I believe in affirmations all day mm -hmm. because I can say them. I can start out saying them and not believing them until I start saying them so much I start believing it. And yeah. then my mind start believing it. Whatever your mind thinks, that's, you that's what you're going to mm -hmm. believe. So. I think that was beautiful and necessary. <laughs> yes. I think we've done what we came here to do. <laughs> All right, before we, uh, before we close out, uh, could you do me a favor? Could you pray us out, please? Sure. All right, cool. God, we just thank you for this day, oh God. God, we thank you for bringing my brother James here to, to teach this series, oh God, of us going through life bold and with faith, oh God. God, we just ask that everyone is navigated the way that they should be navigated, oh God, and believing in their faith and believing in whatever God has called them to go and to do. God, we love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Check, check this out. Do me a favor. Look into that camera right there. Okay. Tell them who you are and let them know that you are bold AF. My name is Yolanda Smith, and gang, gang. I am bold AF. Hey. <laughs> yeah, we love you. God love you so much more. Go out there and create something. Peace. Peace. You did so I'm good. <laughs>
This is the FSC Global.